On beginning on August 5th, I will be entering a behavior counseling clinic to undergo two weeks of intensive therapy to begin the process of addressing my behavior. An explosive announcement from Mayor Bob Filner. He will undergo treatment for his behavior, but he will not resign, setting off a firestorm across the nation tonight. Does he need therapy to know that you don't treat women as pieces of meat? Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Team 10 broke this story on 10news.com before the mayor even announced it. And new tonight at 11, what a mayoral intern is claiming he saw the mayor do. Plus, 10 News is speaking to the man behind a new recall effort that some say was actually started by Filner supporters and could actually hurt the chances of recalling Filner. The 10 News reporter Janet Kwok begins our team coverage with why the publisher of LGBT Weekly says he is just trying to give the people what they want. Janet. Well, that's right, Steve. Stamp Corbin didn't respond to my initial calls and emails, but when we showed up to his office tonight, he told me this effort wasn't because of what he thought of the mayor. It was about giving San Diegans a chance to speak up. The city gets to decide. If they decide he goes, he goes. If they decide he stays, he stays. And with this newspaper announcement, Stamp Corbin took the first step to recall the mayor. The owner and publisher of LGBT Weekly says he did it because he feels the city is gridlocked with Filner fatigue. I just want to bring this to a close. We're tired of it. It's been two weeks. It's a national story. What I want it to be about is what the citizens think. And what he thinks, he tells us, isn't pro or anti-Bob. Corbin says his stance has made him the target of headlines, accusing him of trying to make a strategic move to stop other groups from their own recall efforts. So we wanted to know if more than one recall process can run at the same time. After all, if one recall campaign fails, petitioners would have to wait six months before filing again. Our calls and emails to the city clerk's office were forwarded to the city attorney. When we didn't hear back, we went to the attorney's downtown office for answers and were told we'd have to wait until Monday. Time, Corbin says, the city can't afford. The major issues, all of the things that need to be resolved um, for our wonderful city are not getting done. And so here's an opportunity to bring this to closure quickly so we're not talking about this for the next 18 months. And Corbin won't be paying anyone to gather signatures, but he will be hiring a third-party accounting firm to tally those signatures up. Now, petitions will be available at the LGBT Weekly's office in Bankers Hill by mid-August. And Corbin says he plans on posting the petitions online as well. Live from the studio, Janet Kwok, 10 News.